Hi everyone, welcome to the next issue of our vlog. It has been, it's been a little while since I've done a vlog. We've been busy with a lot of other things happening in Stone Stitches between Enterprise Awards and birthday celebrations. But um, before I go on my holidays, I'm going somewhere warm, which will be very nice because it's been, it's been a long year, with a lot of things happened. So I'm looking forward to a little bit of downtime and somewhere warm. But it has got me thinking about summer knitting and what I like to knit in summer, what I like to wear in summer, and also the kind of fibers that feel good in summer and actually enhance your summer wardrobe. And I thought you might like to hear a little about my thinking and the whole thought process as to what I consider summer knitting or what I enjoy in summer. Now, you may have your own opinions on this, but maybe it might introduce you to some new yarns you might like to work on in summer or different types of patterns that work particularly well during the summer. So I, before we kind of start off on the whole thing, probably the first thing to think about is whether you even knit in summer. For some people, they end up knitting a lot less in summer and different kinds of activities take over. Um, I know particularly things like gardening, like there's a lot of people who would knit who during the winter months, it, when it is darker and you spend more time indoors, knitting becomes a much, much larger part of their life. And then potentially as the summer hits and the garden comes into full bloom and really demands attention. And of course, here in the Northern Hemisphere, the days are much, much longer. So you've got like, it's still bright at 11 o'clock at night here. It just, the days go on really long. But what that basically means is that you can spend a lot more time outdoors. So it may actually be that you knit a lot less in the summer. Um, so for summer knits that I've got in front of me here that I'm going to share with you, it might actually be that you're doing those a little bit earlier because you know that you're not going to be able to have the knitting time when you're doing it. Or alternatively, some of the knits that are particularly fast or very, very useful for the summer because whatever time you do have, you want to be able to get them out the door really, really quickly. And then I suppose the last kind of summer knit that you're going to have will be holiday knits. And I think that actually falls into the other camp as well, where keeping the knits simpler so that if you're out somewhere and you're talking with people, but you still want to actually have your hands active in knitting, then something that is simple, a lot of stockinette stitch, ideally in the round, things like that are going to be particularly good for summer holiday knitting, which is a different category again, slightly. So that's kind of my general thoughts about summer knitting and what kind of things work and what things don't. The reason I like different kinds of fibers for the summer is because wool doesn't always feel great to be worn in hot weather. It just can have kind of, it doesn't feel as soft, even soft wools, they feel different when, when the temperature starts coming up. I find myself gravitating towards um, both a lot of plant fibers and also certain silk yarns, which work very well in the summer. A couple of reasons for this. One of them is that they just, they feel cooler. They've got a different, more cool sense in your hands. And when you wear them, they don't provide the same kind of warmth. So it's clothing as a covering rather than clothing as a warmth very often for, for summer knits. For the same reason, I find myself attracted to different kinds of stitch patterns. Like I'll use, if I'm using a yarn, it'll often have a very open gauge so that um, when you're wearing it, there's a lot more breeze going through. It's not as compact. It's not as tightly knit, basically. Um, and also a lot more lace knitting or lace panels, things like that. Very same reason. Nice amount of breeze, nice bit of um, just comfortable to wear in the summer. So they would be the kind of patterns that I design and I like to knit for summer knitting. And there's big selection so that you can actually pick what ones work for you as well. So what we're gonna to do today is look at two sets of things. First one is different types of yarns that I do like to knit within summer. This is in no way extensive. This is just some of my own personal favorites and the ones that we've ended up running into stolen stitches as well. Um, and then also some patterns that are either knit in those yarns or a similar fiber or ones that weren't knit with that, but I think could work very well with it. So let's get started with the very first one. This is a new edition and I absolutely love it. It is called Soft Silk. Now, silk, um, when I started researching it, I realized comes in many, many different forms. 
I knew that when, when people talk about silk very often, you'll hear mulberry silk held up as the gold standard. Um, and in fact, mulberry silk accounts for about 90% of the silk that's produced. But mulberry silk, it, it describes one part of it because what that is, it's the type of silkworm. But where the silk comes from varies. So there's different grades or different types of silk, and even though you've got different silkworms, you'll have the mulberry is the most common. Um, I'm going to pronounce this wrong. I think tusser is the name of another one. is a is another very common, um, not anywhere near as common as mulberry, but another one you may have come across. The standard way of creating silk, particularly when you hear from mulberry, is from the middle of the cocoon, the strands that they pull out, the fibers, they're very fibrous, they're very long strands, and what it creates is a really strong, shiny, heavy, smooth yarn. So that would be, when you think of silk, and you know, particularly very, very shiny, almost satin-like silk, that's going to be coming from the middle of the cocoon. Um, there's a baby pattern here. Uh, this is taupini and it is knit in fiber spates scrumptious yarn. It's a chunky weight yarn. The, the, this particular yarn is discontinued now, but the reason I have it here is it's a mix of merino and silk. And you can really see with this how much of a shine you get from the silk and that. And the silk does two things. First one is it makes a really strong fiber. And in fact, I've come across people who use, um, who like looking for something with silk in it for sock yarn, uh, because of, if they want to avoid using something like an acrylic, that a silk is strong enough to be able to reinforce things like socks if you were trying to go down the entirely natural route. In this case, it creates a nice shine and it gives it a, a great deal of strength to the, to the actual fiber in this. What it also has is that type of silk is very heavy. If you ever get even a very, very thin one, you hold it, got a real density to it. The actual, um, it, it's quite astonishing that sometimes there's certain fibers or certain way things are spun and you can pick one up and the same weight, they'll both say 100 grams and one will feel considerably denser than the other one. So that is when you're looking for strong fibers coming from the middle used but usually it's often used in a very thin basis or else mixed in with something else. But when I think of summer silk, that's actually not the silk that I'm thinking of. It's this one here, which is the soft silk is called a barrette silk or a raw silk. And that actually comes from the outer area. So instead of it coming right from the middle of the cocoon, it's from the outer one. So there'll often be little bits of debris. And normally I say plant debris. In this case, it's actually cocoon debris. Um, and casein and little bits of protein. So before it's been processed, the yarn can actually have a little bit of stick to it. It does come off with washing, um, but it's going to be, but it, it's known as raw silk. And unlike the other silk, it's not very shiny. It's not smooth. It's actually got a thick and thin texture and it is completely matte. And it's got, it's a lot lighter. Um, and in fact, knitting with it, feels a little bit like knitting with a, a very high quality Pima, uh, Pima cotton. Um, you know, where there's like just very, just a very soft, sensual feel to it. And what that actually means is that when you're wearing it and when that's against your skin, it's a really, really pleasant thing to wear. Another reason why silk is particularly useful in, um, in warmer weather, warmer climates, is because similar to um, wool of, of sheep, it absorbs moisture. So a silk will absorb, I believe it's up to 30% of its own weight in moisture before you start feeling damp. So it's particularly suitable to warm climates because it actually is going to make you feel quite cool. So one of the patterns that I've designed that actually was knit in silk, it's not, not the soft silk, but it's, it's also a barrette silk, a kind of a raw silk, is the Summer Drops uh, sweater. As you can see, this one was hand dyed. Um, this one was Dragonfly Fibers. Um, I don't remember the name of the yarn that it was in, but it was. It is the. It is the same type of silk as that one. And I spent a long time trying to find a European substitute for it. And the BC Garn Soft Silk is identical because it's matte. It's light. It's got this lovely thick, thin feel to it. So when you're actually knitting with it, because of the little bumps as you're working through 
it actually, f you find that it knits a quite a loose gauge because they kind of stick as you're going through with it. And so it naturally creates a very open um, fabric to it. And you can basically, with this, the summer drops, you're taking that one step further. So it's knit top down in the round from the neck down. Little bit of short row shaping across the back of the neck. I think I've got this held backwards. Short row shaping across the back of the neck here. And then you've got a drop stitch all the way around. So drop stitches are great because you are wrapping several times around the needle and then in the next one you drop down. So you've done one row of knitting, but you've suddenly gone a whole inch in your actual work. So it's like magic, <laughs> particularly for something like this where you want it to be a little bit extra cool. And then it's got an A-line shaping with a few more drop stitches down at the bottom here. So summer drops is a perfect thing to actually knit in, a, um, in that particular yarn. So I've got a couple of other ones here that could work very well as well. Both of these were from the last summer's um, summer seasons and what they were knit in originally is a set and there's still um, one color, the, the pink color, the very light pink color of this is still available. So it was it was Ito, Asa and Kinu. One of them is has got is 100% silk, same kind of silk as this, but very, very fine. And then to make it just a slight bit thicker, we held it with the other one, which is a mix of linen and cotton. And the end fabric feels very, very similar to what you get in the summer drops. So either of these, this is Hakone, um, and it be, oh sorry, Prunus, I keep getting the names mixed up. This is Prunus Square, and it starts in the middle here, and you do a pinhole cast on, and you've got a very simple lace pattern that works all the way out into an open square and you can actually see me through it and ends with a little pico bind off. So it's designed to be small enough to you hold it across the corner like this and you can wear it as a neckerchief or you can use it as a summer tablecloth or if you wanted to make it a little bit larger because this it's the same pattern repeated around so you could actually make it as large as you want if you had extra yarn and you could actually make it like a, um, a fold over lace shawl for the summer as well so it's just it's a very pretty stitch pattern and it's a very intuitive knit once you get past the first cast on and you can kind of keep knitting round and round in circles so to speak um, and here this is the um, Hakone and it is a scarf again it's used originally that mix of the Ito and uh, Kinu and Asa but the soft silk is going to work just as well with it so you start off with this one with I began with a ruffle it is not necessary if you don't like ruffles there's an alternative just to have a garter edge so with the ruffle you start with a lot more stitches than you're going to end up with in the end and then you very quickly decrease them all across a couple of rows and begin on the lace stitch pattern. So very straightforward zigzag lace stitch pattern. So it's an easy enough one to memorize that if you're on holidays, you can actually very easily kind of take this along and work through it. The, and I was actually thinking about it. If you like things like wraps, this would also be a very easy one to just double it up and make it a bit wider and make a wrap size for this. Um, but it does, it's good one for cooler evenings if you just something show, around your shoulders, around your neck to finish off an outfit or to keep yourself just a little bit extra warm. So that is my first yarn for the summer. So soft silk, which, or a, any silk, a barrette silk or a raw silk where it's just much lighter, matter and feels very comfortable against your skin. The next one is one of my longtime favorites for working with, or rather wearing, I should say, in the summer, and that is linen. Now we've been, uh, I'd been looking at different types of linen and the one I ended up falling in love with, I'm gonna pull a few of the colors here, and you'll see why I fell in love with it. It was the colors. Um, this is an Antigone um, from De, Ram, De Remayu, uh, which I'm pronouncing wrong, uh, but it is French organic linen. Linen is actually a very environmentally friendly option if you are if you're very conscious of that when you're buying your yarn. The reason for that is because it is made from the flax plant, which uses much, much less water and pesticides than most other plants, just naturally. So it means that even an organic version like this is easier to grow. It's more straightforward because of the fact that it just it just needs less tending and is just a much hardier plant. 
Now, because it's a hardier plant, it does mean that it is a rougher fiber. And particularly when you're um, knitting with it for the first time, if you're not used to it, it can take a little bit of getting used to. It's quite stiff, doesn't have a lot of pliability to it. And so that has a kind of twofold impact when you're working with it. The first one being that if you're trying to tension it too tightly, you could end up with the kind of rubbing on your fingers and your fingers getting quite, quite sore with knitting with it for a long time. Second thing being that your tension can be a little uneven, so your stitches will be a bit thick thin. Um, I will say that it's worth experimenting with different types of needles um, that you might find that having a metal needle versus a bamboo or the other way around that it just either has enough grip so that you don't have to hold tight or enough slip that allows you to uh, keep an even tension. So by having each of them, you can kind of figure out which one works best for you, which gives you the nicest result, and also which is the most comfortable to knit with. Um, but it does block well, which means that even if your tension is a little bit uneven, blocking it is going to actually do you an awful lot of favors. So is swatching with this is really essential because it means that you're going to get a very, uh, you'll get a much better idea of what it feels like get into the rhythm of working with it because it does have a very different rhythm and also it allows you to block and to see if the stitches even out so that if you're working on the finished piece and you're still seeing a, seeing a little bit of unevenness you can you can feel a little bit more confident going through if you've blocked a finished piece and you're like it'll be okay I know it's fine um, I'm gonna pop these down oh dropping them around this is probably one of my favorite colors this is just the most glorious green. Um, what's the name on this one? It is called Jardine, which very fitting. Um, but the other thing with this, I found that practice definitely makes a difference. That when I was knitting a garment before with it, I did find that at the beginning it was um, it was very thick and thin, and I couldn't seem to get to grips with the tension. And then as I proceeded and went through it got much more comfortable to work with so that by the time I was finished it felt like a much more natural thing to knit with so do be rest assured if you're finding it kind of hard going just keep practicing with it and go slowly so that your hands get used to it and you get it's just a different rhythm really to work with it so in terms of what to knit with that um, the first one I showed you, um, the summer drops would actually, it would look different, but it would be equally really beautiful in a linen as well. It's going to be a more open fabric, but it would still look very, very well. Um, and one thing I didn't mention as well with linen is linen keeps improving with age. So every time you wear it and you wash it, you actually will find it gets softer and softer and it's going to last, it'll stand the test of time. And as well, because it's kind of a heavy fiber, it gives really nice drape to things. So I have, I do have one item knit in a, um, in a linen here. This is a summer tank top called Huevos, and I do have a second version of it, but this one was done in linen. And you can see here how it's just got this lovely drape and texture to it. And this is one where doing a stitch pattern like a lace stitch pattern is going to be very forgiving in linen because if you've got slight unevenness in lace, you're going to block it and make it really open anyway. So having a little bit of unevenness means that it's going to, it's going to block right out. No problem at all. Um, so I just, I will, I'll show you a second version that I have in cotton of this and you'll see that it's quite different. Each of them have their own attractions, but they definitely have a very different feel. Um, but yeah, I'm a linen is my go-to, even for fabrics. Like I wear a lot of linen dresses, linen tunics, things like that over the summer, because I find that if I'm going somewhere hot, I really crave linen, that it feels very, very good and very light to be wearing. Um, so keep that in mind when you're knitting with it. If you're in a warmer climate, it's going to be a very comfortable thing to wear. So the last of the summer fibers I want to take a look at is good old cotton yarn. I am, um, I actually, I carry a cotton in the shop because I think cotton is a really, really useful staple. It's very cost effective. It dyes up very nicely. When it's dyed, it actually creates some lovely vibrant colors. And I use it a lot for things like um, baby knits and just smaller items like that because I had one of my kids had eczema when they were small 
so anything with synthetics in it or even wool because it was warmer just would cause them to overheat and end up going to get just the eczema really getting a lot of, very aggravated and cotton was kind of my go-to for something that I could make to add a little extra layer of warmth that didn't irritate. So I'm a big believer in cotton for kids, uh, for kids garments. And there's a lot of cotton out there as well. There's going to be machine washable. So for children's stuff, it makes, it's kind of ideal. One of my favorites with cotton for, for children, for adults as well, is stripes because it's very cost effective. The colors are great in it. So it means that you can actually go to town and do a bunch of either rainbow stripes or just various other stripes that it works really well in, in a cotton yarn. Um, there's different types of cotton. Um, the, this one here is called a mercerized cotton. And what that is, it's got, it's, it's a little bit shinier. Um, it's, going to, it's been chemically treated to in, make it a little bit more durable and also to accept dyes more readily. So when you see a shinier cotton, they're usually going to be mercerized. There's also other cottons that you might have come across like a Pima cotton, um, which is a very, very soft cotton. Um, be a little careful with that because some of them can tend to shed quite a bit on the outside. Not all of them, um, but keep an eye out for, um, for shedding with that. If they've got if they've taken ones that have got a longer staple length you won't have that problem but pima cotton will tend to be a very very soft one it's kind of got a, a cotton wool feel to it really weights of cotton i veer towards um lighter weights like things like fingering or four ply up to this is a sports weight or maybe into light dk's like i wouldn't go for heavy dk but lighter weight dk's reason for that is cotton is heavy fiber and it's likely to stretch out of shape if you're doing something in a heavier weight. And I've often even said to people, if they are if they are trying to use a cotton, but they want to go for a heavier weight, I'd be inclined to try and find a cotton acrylic mix, like a 50-50. Um, I don't know if they still do it. Um, Rowan used to do an all season cotton, which was a 50% blend and it was an iron weight. And that means that it still feels like cotton, but the acrylic, doesn't have the same weight so it allows it to um it doesn't have the same stretch out of it so keep the thickness of the yarns you're using with cotton thinner so that you don't have to, you don't run the risk of it being too heavy so i was going to show you the difference in cotton versus linen so this one was the wavos and we had just looked at the linen version of the wavos i'll put this over here and I've knit the same one up in a cotton yarn and you can see that it's it's got a heavier weight to it it is a slightly thicker yarn and it's got a bit more weight but it got it's got a more, it's more substantial so because um, this is a sports weight whereas this would have been a loosely knit kind of a heavy fingering weight so it's got a little bit of the weight and it gives you, but by using something like lace stitches like this, it's going to keep it open and not quite as heavy, but you do get some great colors with it. There is another sweater that I also knit here in a cotton yarn. So this one is Dusty Rhodes. And so with this, it's got a combination of some of it here is you've got in your stockinette stitch for the main panel. And then the sleeves are open work lace. So what that actually does, you can see lace works really nicely in a cotton yarn. And these are both the same, uh, the same cottons. And in stockinette stitch, you get this nice, smooth, open, even effect with cotton. So it's, it is a little bit heavier, but you can counteract that by having it not so long so that it's not going to have the same weight. Um, taking things like this, which you've got a little bit of um, lace panels in it. So just be aware of how a fiber behaves and you can either tweak the pattern to work with that or find patterns that it will enhance rather than take away. So if you want something that is draped or if it stretches out a little, that it's not gonna cause a problem for that, then you know it makes, it makes total sense. But cotton is, it's, it's inexpensive. It's easy to find, huge range of colors, and it's just, it's pretty fast to, to work up as well. So it's kind of, it's a good, it's a good workhorse for um, for summer yarns and for summer tops is kind of the way I feel, I feel about cotton. Um, so I hopefully I've given you some ideas here in terms of summer knitting and the kind of things you might 
want to look for in fibers, in patterns, and in also just um, in terms of what it's going to feel like and how you treat it, both blocking and um, minding it afterwards. So let me know if you're going to start knitting something for yourself to add to your summer wardrobe. Um, please do make sure to subscribe to our Stone Stitches channel here so that you will not miss any of the next vlogs or tutorials that we add up. We fairly regularly add to them um, whenever we've got an interesting topic or something new we want to tell you about. Uh, thank you for joining me and if you have any questions just pop them down below. Mm -hmm.